Hello and welcome everybody to Frederick's Mates. This time, finally, <laughs> I got it right. It is Gary Kasparov we will talk about. And that, of course, means this is not going to be a single episode. It will be at least two episodes. We could, and I uh, probably am right with this, Frederick, we could make 20 to 30 episodes. But let's keep it, let's keep it subtle because there is a lot a lot to read in the book we uh, we have covered in the chess space news article the link is below the uh, youtube video of course and you know of course that frederick has been uh, meeting all those chess world champions before and especially there's a lot to talk about gary kasparov now frederick can you show us the book again please and uh, tell us a little bit what it is about, because it's not only your chess stories, after all. No, it's uh, it's a book on, it's called Schachgeschichten, Chess Stories. And uh, it's at the moment only available in German. The English translation is ready, but uh, it'll take some time. Uh, and I've written it together with a very, very uh, close friend of mine, my colleague, Christian Hesse, he's a professor of mathematics and whom I admire a lot because uh, he has written 22 books in total, mainly about mathematics, but a couple on chess as well. He loves chess. And uh, he has the talent to explain mathematical uh, things, uh, connections, uh, theories and so on in a way that I haven't found uh, with many other people. So it's really enjoyable to read complex stories about mathematic mathematics. And in this book, <clears throat> what he's done is he's written uh, the connection between mathematics and chess. And he also uses a lot of, uh, of very clever little problems which are nothing like normal chess problems. You have to deduce stuff mathematically. And so it's two parts. The half of the book is from, is from me, written by me, about my encounters with all the great players. And half of it is on chess and mathematics. Exactly. And uh, I've read the book. I enjoyed it massively. And yes. it is a quick read. It's like you can just you just browse through it. Because first of all, all your stories, uh, you just read through them. Once you start, you cannot stop, of course. And on the other side, it is not like there's one part like this and one part like this. The stories are mixing up. So it's your story. Then it's a mathematical puzzle and a story and a mathematical puzzle. So you have this like the story part and then you have to use your brain too, which is super nice. It's a, it's a sweet idea. I like it a lot. So yeah, but all this and more, of course, you get, as I mentioned already in the description, underneath the YouTube video, it's leading to our chess space news article, which is about the book and of course, Frederick's mates. So that was the little introduction. Uh, Gary Kasparov, we know already, if you have been reading uh, the chess space news articles, you know the story about Garry Kasparov and Frederick. But uh, I can tell you already, there is even more stories which you probably haven't heard of yet. And we're going to touch the surface a little bit. Uh, Frederick, it's all yours. How, let's start like, like this. How did you meet Garry Kasparov? Okay, this has been told a number of times and much of my life with Kasparov is uh, has been told in the book for example uh, there are it's the largest chapter and i describe that but also you know he has described it in a number of books of his own in his autobiography and in deep thinking mm -hmm. in uh, extenso he has described how we met and and how how chess space was developed and and so on i'll try and be brief on that and I'll try and tell you a couple of stories which are not in the books. I'm looking forward for that, yeah. Well, I met him, I've just calculated, for the first time 41 years ago. And <laughs> I was uh, I was looking after Nigel Short, 
and the 16, 17-year-old Nigel Short, he would stay in my house. And, and he was playing in the Youth World Championship in Dortmund, and I went there. And there I met my one of my best friends in chess, his second, John Nunn. Mm -hmm. And we had a great time, and we were standing one day on the street outside the hotel and uh, chatting, and uh, a young man comes up to me and says, uh, five to three, draw you win, uh, five dollars a game, question mark. <laughs> you know what he meant. He meant I get five minutes, he gets three minutes in blitz games. Uh, if I manage to draw, I win, and it's five dollars a game. I said, no, no, no. I know who you are. You're Gary Kasparov. And he was, you know, he was a, I don't know how old he was. He might have been 18 or 19. Jesus. And uh, he had cleaned out everyone, <laughs> you know. All the grandmasters had, had given him all their cash. Made some good uh, pocket was, money. <laughs> yeah. And he thought, you know, I'm talking to Nigel and uh, John Nunn. I'm probably a trainer or something. One of his, some grandmaster was... <laughs> But of course, I was well, part of clever. You look like a grandmaster, obviously. <laughs> well, so yeah, I get his point there. What happened then was also we had we had done a television program, um, a documentary on how computers play chess, and uh, I had conducted an experiment. The first time cheating was used with computers in chess, I'd hidden a player in a simultaneous exhibition against Dr. Helmut Pfleger. And he had long hair and he had earpieces. And I was dictating moves played in New Jersey by the world champ. No, it, it wasn't world champion yet, but it was a new hardware uh, computer playing chess, Bell. And actually what happened was Bell won the game against Helmut Pfleger. Mm -hmm. And who was very surprised. Of course, we, we didn't cheat. What we did was a uh, Turing test. We asked Flega <laughs> immediately, a minute after the game, did you notice anything? He said, no. Well, some players were very good, some were not. So we said, did you notice that we had a computer playing against you? He said, no, nothing. I didn't notice anything. We said, which one? We said, that game. And he'd lost it. And he said, Wow, they're really strong. <laughs> now, after that, what I did was I, I took five games from the simultaneous exhibition and anonymized them <clears throat> and uh, typed them down in columns, made photocopies, and I distributed them to experts all over the world mm -hmm. and said, which is the computer? And <laughs> most of them got it wrong. And, you know, they... They just said, okay, this one, because it's a particularly weak game or something. And in Dortmund, I went to Gary Kasparov, the young boy, at, at dinner. And I said, hey, listen, can you do me a favor? I'm giving you five games on this sheet of paper. And here's an envelope with my address on it. Please, when you go home, uh, look at these games. And uh, I was talking and talking, but what was he doing? He was running his fingers down the columns, you know, and saying, oh, this is not a computer. No, not a computer. Uh, no, 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 of course not, and so on. And within one and a half minutes, I think, in total, he picked out the computer. He said, this is the computer. So he really understood that the human errors do not occur in computer games Fascinating. and the tactics was uh, computer like and so that's how i got to know him and he claims that he still remembers these encounters in in dortmund <laughs> anyway uh what happened was uh a few years later in 1985 five years later <clears throat> he came to hamburg to play against robert hubner mm -hmm. uh, strongest German grandmaster practice match. He was not world champion yet. And what he did was he was invited by the biggest news magazine in Europe, which is which is Der Spiegel. And 
on the free day, they asked him, what would you like to do on Sunday? It's a free day. Uh, would you like to see a clock factory? No, a car factory. Would you like to see a football match? Would you like to go to a jazz concert? Would you learn? He said, uh, where is Hollenstedt? And they said, Hollenstedt? It's a tiny town outside of Hamburg. How on earth could you know it? He says, I have a friend there. I want to go and visit him. And because I had communicated with him, I sent him a letter and some games and so on. <laughs> we had the same kind of computer. And he came in and, you know, rang my bell and said, hello, I'm Gary Kasparov. You're Frederick Hai. Uh, this is your house. This is your wife. These are your two children. Very nice. The garden is nice as well. Okay, now we're friends, yeah? Uh, now tell me everything you know about computers. So I sat there for a whole week every evening after the games. We would go through what computers can do and what they can't do mm -hmm. and how they can help in chess. And we designed the idea of a chess database. But I was not a, com a programmer and I was very lucky to very soon meet Matthias Rillenweber a physics student who had already constructed a prototype database. Mm -hmm. And we showed this to Gary in Zurich. No, in yeah, in Zurich, I think it was. And uh, he was deeply impressed and he helped us for 10 years to promote this. He encouraged us to finish the program, to form a company, mm -hmm. and he helped us to promote it. Of course, it was we paid him handsomely for all his help zero nothing why because i had advanced from a really good friend of his uh to a member of my family he was i was like you know you don't take money from your uncle or from your cousin or something <laughs> like that so okay he'll, he'll do it all anyway there's one little story i think it's not in my book but I think it's in his book, you know, in his uh, yeah. thinking. It's uh, what happened was I got to know him. I had communicated with him. I'd sent him a disc with some games on the computer he had and we had, mm -hmm. uh, the BBC Acorn, famous computer. And that's why he came to me and uh, to my house and we made friends. And then he told me very proudly, you know, the games you sent me, they're very nice, very interesting, especially one called Hopper. Hopper, you have to uh, move a frog across a river on logs and into uh, into little caves. And uh, there are all kinds of dangers and so on. And it's it's anyway. also, you, you might know it at home under the name of Frogger, which yes, is Frogger. yeah, Frogger is like uh, yeah, this game where the frog has to jump over the highway, yes. over the sea, and then get to the goal. It's very very difficult. To see, it and is it was Frogger, in the yeah. early early eighties era. Yeah, early eighties. One of the first computer games. So Gary said to me, you know, Fred, this game, Hopper, I am the best in Baku <laughs> at playing it. And I said, really? What's your what's your high score? And he said. 16,000. I said, 16,000? That is unbelievable. Uh, okay, I want to challenge you. And he said, uh, you can do more than 16,000? <laughs> I said, no, not me. He said, who, Ingrid? <laughs> no, no, she doesn't play it. Ah, uh, Martin, I had a 10-year-old son. <laughs> These kids are sometimes very, very sharp. I said, no, not Martin. He said, so what? And he saw me grinning. And then he looked down. And he said, not that. <laughs> because I had a three-year-old son. I said, yes, that. And we put him on. Well, first Gary played. And Gary played like he's never done before in his life. There are pictures of it. <clears throat> and mm -hmm. he scored 18,000. <laughs> and then... He said, okay, what what can this kid do? So we put him on telephone books. It was Tommy, my younger son. 
and we put him on telephone books and he sat there and the Spiegel people were taking photographs. So he, he kept looking at what they're doing, setting up <laughs> the lights and so on. And he played and Gary said, okay, I resign after Tommy had reached 35,000. Oh my, come <laughs> they, on. You know, they are really, really good at this. And you know what happened? Gary decided he went back to Moscow and he called a meeting of the Soviet chess, yeah, Soviet, it was still, of the Soviet uh, Scientific Academy or whatever. And he said, we don't have to worry about nuclear weapons and Pershings and so on. We have to worry about the geniuses they're bringing up <laughs> in the West. Of course, Tommy was very smart at this, very good at this, but most kids were, many kids were. Hmm, and indeed. then Gary made a deal with Atari. They used his picture and promotion and so on. I didn't know that. And, and uh, they ar arranged, I think, 200,000 euros in marks, marks at the time, uh, to pay him for this. And he said, no, I want more, but in computers. And they said, okay, oh, that's great for us. Yeah. And then they delivered... Uh, a good number of computers in Moscow, and he gave them to chess clubs, not chess clubs, youth clubs. Wow. Because he said, this is important. We have to get Educate. our children educated in computing. And so I tell Tommy, <laughs> you are personally responsible <laughs> for the computerization of the Soviet <laughs> Union of Russia. Because and of your Frogger Hopper high score. <laughs> yes. And he would come then visit me a number of times and he'd bring friends. This is Yuri and this is uh, Vladimir. Uh, they are my friends. And uh, actually there were people, scientists who, who he brought along. And after 10 minutes, he would say, uh, Fred, show them Tommy's computer. And then they would come up and they'd take notes and so on. And Tommy would pull out discs and stick them in and show them games or whatever he was doing. So they were really <laughs> practically studying him. That is quite fascinating. What, yeah, this is how it happens sometimes. Those are yeah. those little uh, sweet stories, which, um, yeah, I think I've, I've heard it once from you, but uh, it's I didn't know about the deal with the computers, actually. Yeah. I have to cut you off right here because we will keep on continuing to talk about yes. Kasparov in our next episode. Don't uh, worry, it will come uh, surely. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for purchasing the book, of course, too, to appreciate all of this, what Frederick is doing here. We see you soon. Bye-bye. Goodbye.